it's a great honor and pleasure to be with you this morning. Um, I will do my best to, to share my experience with you and uh, I hope you have also other questions or maybe we can further elaborate about your question because it's a, it's a big question, you can say a lot. And um, I, I will try also to give you my experience as a, let's say, external guy from the university. I, I'm not working, as it been said, in the university. I'm working for universities. I'm also working for startups. I'm working for people working alone at home, uh, for farmers, for multinational companies, US companies. I'm also working for Chinese. I'm working against Chinese, and I'm sometimes working for Chinese. That's my job. Mine also. <laughs> Uh, just a few words about my background. Uh, I'm a patent attorney mainly, but my background is technical. I'm a physicist, so I'm a scientist. My, my brain basically is a scientific brain. I, I'm not a legal guy like the lady over there. <laughs> but after a certain time, I became half a legal guy also. You know, so I'm working in that field since about 25 years. I started my career as a patent examiner at the European Patent Office, and then um, it was in, in Berlin, Germany, and then I came back to my country, Switzerland, and I worked for the industry, pharmaceutical and medical industry. I had to create patent intellectual property departments, and I had to fight a lot. My job was mainly to coordinate international litigation, patent litigation at a worldwide level, because in the pharmaceutical field especially, it's very aggressive very aggressive. There is a lot of money, that's the reason. So. Mm. And um, since about 15 years, a little bit more than 15 years, I decided to put on my firm, IP firm, intellectual property firm in Switzerland. And since about five or four years, I'm also a judge uh, at the Swiss Federal Patent Court. It's a second activity. Sometimes I'm not working against Chinese or for Chinese, but I'm just a judge. I have to decide who is a good guy or who is a bad guy. Very strange job. <laughs> so, this is my first slide. I have Euro, so I mean blue, it's about 100, a little bit less than 100 billion. Billion, no. So, this is the first information I want to provide you this morning. Actually, I, I want to, to let you work because I, I've talked too much until now. So I will ask you if you have any idea about the meaning of this amount of money related to the patent field. Any suggestion? No idea. Is the prize to get protection for one patent? No. <laughs> My salary? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Okay. Infringe one profit. Sorry? Infringe ones. Mm, not bad. Yeah. You're very close to the right answer. Another suggestion? Okay. Okay, so I will work now. I will have to explain more precisely the meaning of this. Actually, when I was preparing this slide, it was a pretty long time ago, I had one explanation in mind. And suddenly, when I was preparing this slide, I realized that there was a second explanation. So there are two explanations for this amount in the patent field. The first one is something related to an infringement. It was actually the amount of a sentence pronounced by a U.S. patent court in an infringement case. One company had to pay to another company this amount of money because of an infringement patent. The company, I don't know if you, some of you, you're still pretty young, 
So I think uh, I'm wondering if you <coughs> know that company because it was famous in the past, but today no more. The name of the company is Kodak. Kodak, mm -hmm. so still remember. Now they are almost dying today. They are still existing, I think, but almost dead. Kodak had to pay to Polari this amount of money. Finally, they paid less, but initially it was this amount. And there is a second explanation. Uh, when I was uh, working at the EPO, we made a survey and we determined this amount of money corresponding to the, the waste due to, um, let's say, double research. The waste due to the reinvention of the wheel. People in Western Europe, and not only Western Europe, <coughs> but everywhere in fact, they are inventing almost everyday things, but actually they are reinventing without being aware that the invention was already made by somebody else before them. In Switzerland, there are a lot of people inventing night things in high schools, but quite frequently, they are not the first. They believe to be the first, but unfortunately, somebody else in America, in China, or in Romania, may have had, made the invention before. That's a problem. <clears throat> the problem is still present today, and it will continue, even with internet, all those databases that we are talking about. If you have some experience with patent databases, I wish you good luck, because there are plenty of documents, literature. It's awful to read patent literature. There are millions and millions of documents to read. Even if a patent is granted, we are never sure about the validity, because there might exist some relevant prior art. So, I just wanted to give you this figure. Um, the next slides and the next consideration I'm going to explain, it's not very well structured. Um, I had a couple of ideas to translate to you, and um, I will talk about different things. And I will perhaps start with a, a minute of, um, I should say, philosophy, or uh, coming back to the root of the system. Uh, just a general thought, the premise. Technological progress improves the human condition. I don't want to talk with you this morning about if it is true or not. We will simply agree or ask you to agree that statement. A lot of people in different countries and different jurisdictions they all agree with this. So if we accept this, then comes the question, how can we promote how a country can promote the technological progress? Creating incentive. Andre Catalan was talking about motivation for the inventors. So one solution is a patent system. The history of the patent system is a pretty old history, a couple of centuries in fact. And the patent systems are existing almost everywhere in all types of political systems. The idea is to promote for the mankind, for the society, technological progress. So it's very social, in fact, basically, the patent system. A lot of people are doing a lot of money in these patents. You know that. But basically, it's a very social system. Very generally, also, in, in, it follows what I just said. The patent, the patent is a kind of a deal between the society and the inventor. The society or government providing the patent 
give the incentive or the reward. It's 20 years, normally 20 years exclusivity. Commercial exclusivity. It's a monopoly. Normally, monopolies are not allowed in our economies, but a patent is a monopoly. It is an authorized monopoly. So the inventor or the patentee can have this, but on the other side, he or she has to disclose. So in other words, if somebody would like to get a patent, he has or she has to accept to disclose the invention. It's a decision to take. You may have heard about the famous story, Coca-Cola. The company Coca-Cola decided not to patent the receipt of the drink. They wanted to keep secret the recipe. I think they had made a good decision. It was certainly better to keep a secret, a trade secret, about the process, how to make Coca-Cola, instead of making the patent. Because the patent is 20 years protection. And after 20 years, everybody can use the technology. And also, turning a little bit back to your question, if you make a patent application, there is a risk that somebody else does not respect your patent application. You may have paid a lot of money, you said, I have a patent, but if somebody is not respecting your patent, what are you going to do? Suing that person? Suing the, the big company, which is on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, or very far in Asia? I wish you good luck. I'm very pessimistic. <laughs> But I think we should be really realistic. It's hard. We have to fight. With or without patents. If we do business, we have to fight. Um, I like very much explaining very basic things. Um, I understand that you are coming from different fields, <coughs> different environments. So for some of you, you will think, oh, it's so obvious. And I know that. So I'm sorry for those person who know what I'm going to talk about. And I hope <coughs> I can bring something perhaps new to others. The patent, the patent is what we call also intellectual property. Intellectual property, when you call intellectual property, what, what is intellectual property? It's, I believe, not easy to define intellectual property. And I think one of the easiest things is to compare it with material property. So if you want to better understand what is the meaning of intellectual property, think about material property, like a house. If you have a house, if you are the owner, you can live in your house, you can sell your house, you can rent your house. So if uh, you are if you have a patent, you can use your patent for yourself. You can sell your patent. We, we, we say, okay, sometimes I'm selling my patent. But normally we say assignment. We assign. I assign my patent. And you can also rent. Rent. You, you are still the owner. Keep the patent, but you rent it. We're not talking about renting a patent. We are talking about licensing. Licensing. But licensing is just renting. You are still the owner. You know, Alex, you have to, to, to watch me because of the time. I'm not sure if you can show me because I'm a Swiss, but I have no watch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> to get the patent, there are several requirements. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time because I'm pretty sure my colleague will talk about this later. So there might be a little overlap. But just to, to inform you that there are a certain number of criteria to get patent protection. 
uh, one of them is so-called novelty. The invention, if you, if you want to protect the invention by patent application, the invention must, have, must not have been disclosed public before the filing date. If you want to patent one day, or if you have already done it, it is very important to respect that. I know too many people, especially academic people, Nobel Prize winners, they made a mistake of first publishing or talking to the radio, to the TV, and then coming to see a guy like me. And I said, it's too late. Too late, guys. First, Andre Kadana said it before, I just repeat it. First, protect patent, and then you can disclose, you can talk, you can go to Congress, you can do pastors, etc. Very important. <clears throat> Another the inventive step, I don't want to talk. Clarity, sufficient disclosure. Again, if you want to obtain a patent, you have to disclose. You cannot simply say, my <clears throat> invention will uh, treat cancer. You should explain how. The language of patent is not the same as, a, I would say, the common language. In many situations it is the same, of course, but there are, I can tell you, big differences. For instance, um, if you see in a patent, more precisely in the claims, we call the claims, the part where protection is requested. The claims like a chair comprising three legs. A chair comprising three legs. Uh, what about a chair with four legs, like the one which are here? Do you think that a chair with four legs is covered by this patent? Who we'll say yes? Your hand, if you agree. Yeah. Just one person? <coughs> yes, of yes or four? <coughs> <coughs> and the other people, they say, okay, no, no, no. This patent is not covering the chair with four legs. It's only three legs. This is what I deduct, since you didn't apply. So. Yes, of course. Four legs are covered here. And what about one billion legs? <coughs> covered? Yes or four? Yes or four? A chair with one billion legs is covered by this patent. If it was written chair consisting of three legs, yes or four? No more. Only covered three legs. If it is written a chair consisting, it's only three legs, no four legs. A product X obtained according to a process Y. Um, I don't want to ask you this question again because I think we don't have too much time. But a lot of people might think, oh, this pattern is covered only the process Y to manufacture product X. When we read such a sentence, we say, of course, yes, of course. Only process Y is covered to obtain product X. It's not protection for product X in general. The right answer is that the product X is covered no matter the process. Even if Y is written specifically here, the patent is covering any type of process covering the product uh, make, for making the product X. Finally, the table for surgical operation. If somebody, if, uh, somebody is filing a patent application with a specific table for surgical operation, and if the same table is already existing, but not for surgical operation, but for in the kitchen, for instance, it's the same table, the shape, and so on, the guy cannot obtain a patent for this. Because for it is not limiting. So you see, it's written for surgical, so it's only protecting surgical. There you go. No. Be careful. Um, Common filing strategy, Andre Katana already mentioned it. Uh, 
very often at the EPFL and many other places, um, there is a first filing called provisional filing. Um, in fact, <coughs> provisional filing, and I'm looking at my colleagues because they know that perfectly, provisional application the system only exists in the US. We call provisional also as were, but it's more precisely provisional type. We are playing a bit with, uh, with the law, but the final result actually is the same as uh, the US provisional filing. It's a very cheap filing, fast, and, and then all the advantages were already mentioned before us, so I want to come back. And then international application. So the idea, especially for a high school, is to minimize the cost at the beginning, trying to find investors, big companies or bankers or somebody with money, and then say, okay, I, I made something, I did some preliminary steps, protecting. Um, do you agree to, to pay for the next steps? This is a general strategy, because otherwise it's very, very expensive. A few arguments in favor of patenting. The first one is the commercial exclusivity I was referring to, so I think uh, uh, it's clear enough. Um, their return on investment. And then, the second point, to generate the interest of an investor or the industrial partners. I personally believe that it is perhaps the reason number one, the advantage number one of the patent generate the interest of the big companies or the VCs. Especially for startups. Startups, startups like many other human beings, they, they need money. And at the beginning they have a brilliant person and sometimes they have a patent. And if they have a patent, then they can approach investors, potential investors. I have something, are you interested? I'm also working for investors. I'm, as I said, I'm also working for big companies, <coughs> for bankers, and they are coming to me and saying, I'd like to know if this startup or if this university has a good idea uh, before financing the project. What is your opinion? This is my, my job to, to make an appointment in the process of due diligence, for instance. And if they are, the chances to get the money are higher, even if the patent is of low quality. That's really funny. But if there are no patent, if a startup or, say, an inventor is going to a potential partner and say, I have a brilliant idea, but no patent, I can tell you, the partner will say, thank you, but I'm not interested. That's a reality. Um, increasing the, the assets has been said, it is an asset. Advertising, so when you are marketing a product and you say it is patented, patented, it's great, it should be great, great product because there is a patent. So I buy it because it is patented. Advertising. This is the effect against competitors, of course, or suppliers. One should be careful sometimes because we request the services of a supplier to manufacture a prototype or products, but this supplier may also be the same supplier for your competitor. And then uh, he may give your invention to your competitor. Academic career seems that it is nice for academic people today to say, I have not only publication, but also patents. Once somebody told me one patent is equivalent to 50 publications. <laughs> Finally, humanitarian acts. I will tell you a story, a true story, about an institution, a very uh, non-profit organization acting in the, in the cancer field. And I had a discussion with the director. During 20 years, they were working very hard. They made very interesting 
discovery, scientific work, but never, never the product they made, what has been put on the market. <coughs> was nice product, nice therapeutical method product, nobody manufactured and sold that. Why? Because the policy of this institution was to publish as soon as possible the results, to give to the, to the humanity the result of the science. But no product on the market. Why? Because no industrial partner was interested not to have a patent, because patent means commercial exclusivity. Big pharmaceutical companies, if they want, if they accept to sell a new drug, it must be protected. They must have the exclusivity, otherwise they will not do business. And it took 20 years for that institution to realize that they had to start to, to deal with the patents. And today, the product are on the market. Okay, that's my pattern, but sometimes there are the advantages. It's really difficult to be respected. Again, again, it's very difficult. And we can perhaps talk later about what can we do with what you've done in Hong Kong, you said, but it's hard. Sometimes we can, one can ask ourselves, okay, why should I do that? It's very expensive, hard to enforce, as I said here, and very expensive. <coughs> there is a common mistake a lot of people are doing with respect to, to patents. Uh, I've been told that more than 95% of the CEOs all the companies worldwide are doing this mistake. 95% of the CEOs are thinking that if they have a patent, they can use it. They say, we have a patent. This is our patent. We are entitled to commercialize, to, to market the product. The answer is no. You cannot say that. If you have a patent, you can say, I can exclude Patent is a right to exclude. It's not a right to exploit. Sounds strange. Let me give you just a, a very short example to illustrate this situation. Imagine you have a first company having a patent on product A. Okay? First patent, product A. And then, years later, another company is finding that if you combine A plus B, it's a great product. So the second company is filing an application A plus B. If the combination A plus B is original, they may have a patent. So patent number two. A good patent, strong patent, everything is fine. But if they want to use a second patent, A plus B, they cannot because there is another older patent covering the product A. They have to pay royalties, a license, to exploit the A plus B combination. That's a very common situation. <coughs> um, just two, two signs. Yeah. Um, a lot of, um, just want to mention a few risks in that field. I know, especially in the academic world, that uh, the patent literature is underestimated. A lot of the scientific, they say, it's not good quality. They are right, scientifically speaking, very often. Nothing. I agree, but it is information. We estimate at about 64 person, 64 person, all invention made by the mankind, only, they are only disclosed in the patent literature. You, if you are not reading patent literature, you will miss two thirds of all the invention made by the mankind. And when I say that, it means 
There is no product on the market, no websites, no uh, scientific paper, only independent documents. This is one of my favorite games when I have a high reputable professor of the university coming to me and say, I'm the first to, in to have invented this. I have this with all my assistants, with my PhD. We are sure. I'm the first. And I, I'm asking him sometimes, did you check the patent literature? No, I don't do that. There is nothing relevant. And then I ask, can I have a look for you? OK, but don't spend too much time. <laughs> you are very expensive. That's true. We are very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the most 50 percent of the cases I can identify relevant prior art. More than 50 percent of the cases. You should really spend some time. Everybody uh, working in the innovation should spend some time looking at this kind of literature. And there is also a risk to be either to think, I, I, I'm the first, I'm the best, I'm the first human being that invented this. And uh, I've mentioned the 5 billion euros waste. This is a risk. But there is a contrary also. In the scientific world, a lot of scientists they are very uh, shy. A lot of scientists are very shy. They say, no, I did nothing in my lab. I don't want to go and see those people. I don't want to mention them that I made an invention. It's nothing, it, it's, but it might be very good invention. But if they are not coming to the TTO, or not coming and talk to their boss of the lab, something is is missing. That's a risk. There is also a risk when drafting a patent application to be, again, too shy and to say, we're not ambitious enough to draft a very narrow patent application. And uh, one should really try to broaden as much as we can the scope of protection. It's also a, a danger to be too generic when we draw the patent application. We must be broad as, as broad as possible, but also very clear, very complete definition. And finally, uh, there is also a, a risk that, you know, when we file a patent application, it at a one time, and then the, when the patent is granted, it might be after five years. At the EPO, on average, it's maybe three to five years from the final date until the grand date. I've seen once in my life a duration of 65 years since the filing date and the granting date. 65 years. So, during that period, the product at the beginning, which was, which was invented, the product may have changed during development. And finally, the product which is on the market, the marketed product, may no more be covered by the initial patent. Nobody realized that. Um, yeah, perhaps, yeah, the, the, this story, I, I call it a B story. It's a true story which happened at the APFL. I don't want to cite the, the name completely by respect <laughs> but this is an example to drink. not following that kind of example I, I believe first it was a as I call quick and dirty first filing we were in a rush we just took a document kind of publication it was a provisional like application okay. was the first mistake and then shortly after there was a publication, a scientific publication, about the invention. But the invention was, con I'm sorry, the publication was containing additional information. And in addition, the, the list of the authors on the publication was not identical to the inventor's list on the patent application. And in addition, I mean, the, the patentee said, I, I want to discuss personally with the, the U.S. Um, examiner. And uh, he was my client. I mean, uh, no, I'm 
I'm just providing advice to my clients say, I want to discuss with the patent office. Nor my clients. I let you do this. And uh, I think because only one of these, uh, let's say, mistakes was sufficient to create problems. But this application was filed 12 years ago, and we are still fighting for it today. And uh, the UPFL, I don't know who exactly paid a lot of money. It really was a waste of money, I tell you. This is my final uh, slide. No matter if you take intellectual property into account or not, sooner or later, you will have to deal with it. You may take the decision not to protect your invention. Sometimes it's a very good decision, as I said, the Coca-Cola case. You know, sometimes it's good not to spend your money. <coughs> Even in that situation, you should at least do one thing, check if your invention can be commercialized without falling under the protection of a patent owned by somebody else. In Switzerland in particular, but in many other countries, we have a lot of infringers who are not aware they are infringers. They say, we don't want to patent or we have patent. We are commercializing product. <coughs> Business is fine, they have a lot of money, they receive a lot of money, everything is fine, blue sky. <laughs> and suddenly they receive a letter from a guy like me, or another guy like me, uh, from the US, a lawyer said, Oh, um, we have learned that you are selling this product. I draw your attention to the fact that my client is the owner of a patent, which is uh, Covering uh, the product you are selling since a few years, so now you have to stop immediately or, and, or pay uh, my clients uh, millions of dollars. It's a very common situation. So, if you don't care about intellectual property, at least the intellectual property of the other intellectual property will come to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
and then uh, the first wall surrounding the, the tower. The tower in the tower you have uh, the princess or <laughs> jewels. And and very often I don't I can't remember if there were several walls uh, initially, but let's imagine because this is what I need <laughs> for my example. There are several walls like this. So a good patent is of that kind. You have the invention, the princess, here, jewels, here. And then you could be pleased with a, a protection only with the tower. You say, the tower itself is made of stone, it's strong, you have guardians. It's perhaps enough, yes, or no. If you put a wall around the tower, it's better. And then another wall, and then another wall. Here, at the very far end wall, it's more difficult to, to ensure protection because the enemies, they can come here and if they are successful, they can break the wall here. And then, if you don't have intermediate walls, then, or no tower, but just the, the center here, then if they break the very big wall, then they would directly come to the treasure. On the other hand, if you have fallback position, fallback position, intermediate wall, then you may stop the enemies. More concretely, in the patent field, if uh, I take the example of, um, again, I'm working with letters, if your invention is a combination of, this is your invention, combination, let's say, of five products. You combine A plus B plus C plus D plus E. This is your invention. <coughs> combine five compounds, <coughs> elements, could be the IT field. So, take five features together, you have your invention. But maybe if you use only A, B, C, and D, Four feature, it's already an invention. It looks, it might be an invention. So, when you draft the application, the general wall, the broadest wall, claim number one, claim number one, would be claiming only product A, or B, or C, or D, or E. Nothing more. You first try to say, I'd like to have an invention for compound A or B or C. That's all. And then the second wall, claim number two, you say A plus B. It's more limited. And then finally, claim number blah, 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 and you have uh, this product. So this product, which is claimed here. So this is the center of the tower. A B plus C, the, the, the very good invention, because the, the perfect embodiment of the invention is the, the combination of all five features. But A alone is already something which might be original. So filing an, an implication with this, but including the fallback position A plus B, A plus B plus C, those are fallback positions. If you only file, if only if you only file the last claim, what's the risk? This one? Yeah, just the, just the, and you don't have the fallback position. What's the risk? Then you have somebody uh, working with A plus B plus C plus D, and and he will exploit this with or without the patent, and you will say, but this is my invention. I got this idea too. I'm sorry, but you claim something more narrow. You included feature E. You cannot sue that person. You say, This is my invention. I'm sorry, guy, your patent was too narrow. You can do nothing against that person. He's legally, legally entitled to his death. <coughs> yeah? Um, I have one or maybe two questions. Thank you. Um, Question number one is about timing. 
uh, suppose you have a product on market, you did not patent it. At uh, one point, you do get that letter from somebody like you. Excuse me, sir, can you say your name and your uh, position? Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Reza Kustav Bablutsa. I'm a manager of uh, Lights of Mania Medical Software Company. I'm sorry, the Fluj IT cluster. Um, so, you start selling your product. It's innovative, it's all that. It's not patented. And five years later, somebody figures, hey, I'm going to, like the sun's to see, I'm going to patent this thing, which is very much like what you do. And you end up being uh, unprotected at that point. Is there any way of you getting protected afterwards? That's the first question. The second question, which is related to this, uh, what about junk patents? There are lots of patents that are being, especially in the software industry, that are being filled on very, very weird and uh, things that seem, that seem very easy, like user interface uh, gadgets or uh, something that's very, very easy to create. Uh, what can you do to protect uh, yourself yes. from being yeah. um, sued or um, <coughs> yeah. Regarding your first question, a, it, it's very difficult. There is <coughs> one possibility, it really depends on the case, really on the case by case basis, where well, we have to judge. But if you were using or selling your invention several years before the filing of the subsequent then the subsequent patent is not valid because of the, of the, of the feature the novelty requirements I was referring to is not met. So if you can prove that you are using commercializing the product, showing your publications or newspapers or whatever, you may be able to invalidate the subsequent even if it's not patented? Even uh, if what I have is not patented? If it is patent pending or an application under examination, do you mean? Uh, no, if, if it's not no patent at all. Ah, no patent at all. No, in that case, it will certainly be impossible. It's just public domain. Everybody can use the invention, but nobody can have a commercial exclusivity not only. Because by selling your, your product without having a patent, you give to the public present mm. and the public include also your competitors and they can use your own invention for free. But can they patent it? No. no. Because your your invention, if you it was made available to the public, comes, would constitute an obstacle to the patentability <coughs> of the subsequent patent application. Regarding your second question, it, it's, a, it's a great problem, especially in your field. And we also have an increasing threat coming, once again, from the United States. Thank you, the US. <laughs> patent trolls. Patent trolls. trolls? Yeah. yeah. Companies, they are buying big patent portfolios, and then they are suing other companies. <coughs> the only business just making money. They are not creating something, just making money. Um, I think if you if you detect one of or, or a couple of those um, problematic patterns, I think one of the best things to do is to, to spend some time reviewing them, checking if you could show that they are not valid. But just just for yourself, or maybe together with uh, some advice of of um, my colleagues. And then, if you are convinced that they are not valid, then you can go further with your business. Don't spend any more money or trying to invalidate their patents. But just keep your legal opinions or your opinion, and then do your business. And if the, the other people are coming and see you, and then you can say, okay, be careful, I've checked, I've reviewed, I got perhaps a legal opinion, 
and if you start really to sue me, I will kill you. I will invalidate your patents. That's one of the most pragmatical solutions I would advise. For trying to sue somebody in the US or I don't know where, trying to show that his patent is not valid, you should not spend your time and money with that. If I may, I also have another question. Um, maybe this is a really difficult question. Uh, it, it borders the, um, it borders the um, question of intellectual property and the actual use of the, um, of the invention. And I'm talking about data. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there are, um, uh, my company is in the medical field. Uh, what we do is medical data migration. Uh, that's our core business and also do archiving. Yeah. And one of the big problems in this field is data permanence, uh, meaning uh, data being available and usable throughout the years. Now, there are a bunch of companies, big companies, uh, Philips, uh, GE, and so forth, yeah. but notably Philips, um, who a few years ago employed a very special algorithm of encoding the imaging data. Um, they um, provide a service model where they store the data for their customers, meaning the, the hospitals, mm -hmm. and will not allow access to that data uh, except through their own uh, interfaces. Mm -hmm. Now, those interfaces are slow and takes a lot of time to change this from that system to another. Mm -hmm. We come in and we do our reverse engineering uh, for the purpose of data interoperability. But still, uh, that's not the problem. The problem is the denial of vendors like Philips or others to give access to the data to their clients. They hold their clients' data. It's your, you, you have your own medical examination stored in some data center somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, if you want to get that data, you have to pay this much, and we will not give you better access because that, that's intellectual property. How does, where is the, the, the line between intellectual property uh, of a company and the use of that, yeah. um, the data for whoever uses it? It's a very difficult question. Yeah. Maybe if also I could tell, but I, I will try to do try to reply possibly please. Um, I mean containing containing a certain data in general on the, in, a, in a specific format, there there is there might be some kind of intellectual property with that, which is certainly not a patent or anything like that, but what we call copyright. If you have a type of information, not the content itself, but, but the format I would say. In the format. It is protected by copyright. So under that shape, you, you cannot use it. Mm -hmm. Then otherwise, um, they, they, they might be, um, yeah, that, you know, it might be possible basically to, to use in another format the data, if the format is changing, the same content but presented in a different manner. So legally, it might be a law. But for business reason or respect or the, the, the company they are working with uh, Philips or others, the, the hospitals, they, they want to maintain a good relationship <coughs> with uh, the other companies for you know uh, relationship uh, consideration. They would not be inclined to help you to do this. This kind of problem is a human they won't problem. Stop you either. Sorry? They won't stop you being the other company. That, that's already sometimes a major problem. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I mean, using the data, if it is by another system, you, you may be allowed to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what you would like. Maybe I don't know. Uh, do the uh, data contain some personal data, like patient data? That's, that's the problem, yes. Yeah. This is, this is so maybe yeah, the, the patients themselves uh, they have, the right have the right to yeah. uh, claim uh, of course, that uh, these data are shown and uh, restituted to, to them. So maybe the hospital could contact the patient and uh, try to uh, agglomerate all uh, claims by patients saying, I want to access my data. 
I was I was citing Phillips, but actually in uh, in UK um, it was G that uh, clearly refused access. They they are being changed. They are being switched as a system. They contain millions of records for tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of patients. Mm -hmm. um, but they will not allow access to their data that they keep. And mm -hmm. what do the trusts do, the, the hospitals do? Do they go to every patient and say, you go to G and take that data out? And this is an, appears to be because they, uh, they, they're, they're bullying their customers. Mm -hmm. And apparently they're doing that because there's no regulation Absolutely. that Prevents them to do so. Yeah, no. maybe if a hospital or a very important client of G would really take this action, then it will make them move, maybe. And this hospital could yeah, collect all, uh, power of attorney of the patients to, to do these claims. This yeah. is, yes, they did move, but not in UK. They moved in US. We, we worked with them in the US, and in the US, through the customer, they moved. In the UK, through the customer, they did not budge. So there's a difference between the power of the customer in the US versus Europe. I'm very sorry. Uh, I, uh, I know that there are many regulations about the data integration, data harmonization, data. There are many, many institutes like the automated clearing houses for the for the for bank. Yes, yes, for the banking sector. There are many, many institutes that uh, offer regulation, uh, including uh, medical records. Uh, I believe the new uh, big company that is called Lyson, uh, the, they are based in Norway. If I don't, if I recall, uh, they have, uh, they have. I uh, to to give you a question, to give you an answer of your question. I believe uh, it will be best for you to make. Uh, a system with clear processes, you know, because if you already have a data, right, in a, a right format, you, you, you are the engineer, you will uh, know how to extract that data. Uh, well, you think you can discuss this afterwards? Of okay. course. Uh, I will, I'm okay. having sure. another question. I'm very sorry. Um, I don't know if you are aware about the new European funds, uh, the, the new European program that is called Horizon 2000. And, uh, yes. Thank you, Greg. They are. Do you think uh, it will have a good impact uh, for the patenting uh, process here in Romania? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 really. Uh, I've just about this. Uh, my country was. Uh, recently rejected from that project because the Swiss population took a very <coughs> trench decision a few weeks ago <coughs> and then uh, we have been recently rejected no? by the 2000 uh, so well, far it's, it's not, not yet decided it's not final I have heard uh, two days ago it had been decided but yeah and um, but I, I'm really not aware about if you or perhaps you say something or so far I have not read mm -hmm. anything about uh, patents or helping countries uh, developing the patent system uh, in these programs. Yeah. They are helping uh, institutes, also universities, also many many researchers want to uh, make a uh, bachelor, I believe. Uh, so they are uh, uh, having about uh, 69 billion, uh, billion euros <laughs> for... Uh, this is for not for patenting, it's for research. It's for research. Yes, it's for research. Yeah. Yeah. I have never heard about this or, or the, the this But it will have a big impact. Yeah, okay, so uh, I think we, we have scheduled... Uh,